Okay, let's talk about function notation. And to be honest, I just wanna dive right into this one because it's kind of a weird subject at times, but pretty much all that function notation is, is another way to write y. So if you see this f of x down here, this new notation, that is the epitome of function notation. Um, it basically replaces y, where we've used y as the dependent variable, you know, whatever variable is on the vertical axis. So when you see this, what I want you to remember is that's the function f evaluated at whatever x is, or what we usually say is f of x, okay? And again, it's really just another way to rewrite y, all right? So with that in mind, let's take a look at something else. Again, noting that function notation, we start with f of x, basically meaning y, I want you to know that this is not f times x, okay? Do not make that mistake. It's not f times x. It looks like it, but that's just a notation, f of x, okay? So just as an example of how we can actually utilize this in the beginning is I want you to see um, these three values right here. So let's take a look at this example. Um, I've given you a function f of x um, and it's 2x minus 5. So any input that I give you, I want you to double it and take out 5, take away 5. That's kind of another way to look at this. But what I want you to see is f of 0. So f of 0, all I do is plug in 0 for x and evaluate it. That's what they mean when they say evaluate the function um, at x equals zero. So if I plugged in x is zero, I would get two times zero minus five. That gives us negative five. So what that tells us is that when x is zero, y is negative five. You could think of it like that. The function value is negative five when x is zero. Okay, let's try it for the next one. So f of two, well, I'm taking the two and I'm, uh, I'm gonna replace, I can't even talk, I'm gonna replace every x value with that. So two times two is four, minus five is negative one. So you could look at it as y is equal to negative one when x is equal to two, okay? And for the last one, when x is five, f of five gives us what? Well, if I plug in five up in here for x, I get two times five, which is 10, minus five, which is five. And these are all points on this graph. If I graph this function up here, it would be a linear function. Um, one point would be zero, negative five. Let's pretend we had a little fake graph down here. Zero, negative five. Two, negative one would be somewhere up here. And five, comma, five would be maybe up here. And if you notice, that's actually a linear, linear function. So that's a little bit different. That's not related to function notation, but I want you to see what this is. We just found three points, but what I want you to notice is that this is what function notation allows us to do. It tells us, hey, this is, um, our function is negative five when x is zero and, and so on and so forth. But really these just mean y, okay, the y value. So let's try another one. Just as a general side note, we don't have to always use F when we're talking about function notation. We can use G, H, Y, any letter you can think of, any symbol, um, and that's perfectly fine as well. So you see these down here, these are all valid uses of function notation, and you'll see them a lot as well. Let's try another example, and you'll see this quite often when we're doing these. It'll say something along the lines of evaluate the following function when x equals blank, blank, blank. So for this one, we want to evaluate g of x when x equals 1, 2, and 6. So what we do is we basically we're looking for g of 1. That's a g, by the way. We're looking for g of 2, and we're looking for g of 6. Wow, I can't even write that. Let's try that again. g of 6. So for the first one, if I plug in 1 for x, I get 2 minus 6. So that's negative 4. g of 2, if I plug in 2 for x, I get 2 minus 12. So g of 2 is negative 10. And then when I plug in 6, I get 6 times 6. So 2 minus 36, that's negative 34. So the function g evaluated at 1 is negative 4. And evaluated at 2, it's negative 10. And when we evaluate it at 6, it's just negative 34. So this is just another example of how we basically are just substituting these values in for x and figuring out what the function equals. And again, that's basically our y value for the graph. Now we're gonna try something a bit different. Um, if you notice, if you look at these problems a, b, and c, um, it's a little bit backwards. Before we were looking for the function value when x equaled something, now we're going backwards. We wanna know when does f of x equal negative one? Well, all you're doing is you're just replacing this now. Instead of substituting in for x, we're substituting in for f of x. So for a, I'm gonna replace this up here with negative one. So let's put a up here and say negative one is equal to 4x minus five. 
Now go ahead and work that one out and then we'll go through it in a second. So hopefully you added five to both sides and you got four equals four X and then we divided both sides by four and we get X equals one. So F of X is equal to negative one when X is equal to positive one. So if I plug in one up here, just to check four times one is four, four minus five is negative one. And that's it. So we're really kind of, if you want to think of it, we're working backwards. We're essentially asking when does Y equal negative one? So on this graph, y or f of x would equal a negative 1 when x is equal to positive 1. So let's try the next one. So hopefully you did the same idea. We took uh, 7 and we replaced it with f, uh, we replaced f of x, excuse me, with 7. And let's see what we get. So go through this. If we add 5 to both sides, we get the left side as 12. So let's move that over here. 12. This looks pretty, pretty, uh, crowded. Let's move that a bit. So we get 12 equals 4x. If I divide both sides by 4, I get x equals 3. Now let's double check and plug in. So when x is 3, I get 4 times 3. Minus 5 is 12 minus 5, and that's 7. So we know that our function equals 7 when x equals 3. And again, basically thinking of it as y equals 7 when x equals 3. And then for the last one, now I'll move this up just a bit. If you need to take notes, make sure you take them because I'm just about to erase these. Last one. So for C, we do the same exact thing. We're going to replace f of x with 23. Now from here, we're going to add 5 to both sides. And then from here, if we divide both sides by 4, I get x equals 7. Let's double check. If I plug in 7 up here for x, I get 7 times 4, which is 28. 28 minus 5 is 23. And that's it. So we found out that um, x would need to equal 7 for f of x to be 23. And again, when x equals 7, y equals 23, if you want to think of it like that. That's a great way to think of it. Okay, this is the last kind of question that I want to show you guys, the last type of um, problem that they'll ask you to do. They'll give you an actual graph and say, okay, um, evaluate the following um, f of 0. All I want you to do is say, okay, when x is equal to 0, where is my function at? If you look, it's right down here at negative 3. That's all that's asking. Like, uh, that's, that's it. <laughs> so it looks really confusing, but when you look at it, you're really just looking to see where's the graph at when x is equal to 0. So for the next one, we're looking at x equals 1. So when x equals 1, where is our graph at? Our graph looks like it's at negative 2. And then for the last one, for f of 2... When x is equal to 2, I'm going to go out, where's our graph at? Looks like our graph is right at positive 1. And that is it. That's how you look at a graph and evaluate, okay, f of 0 is blank. You're really, this is basically like me asking you, given this particular graph, what is y when x is 0? So when x is 0, y is negative 3. And for the next one, what is y when x is 1? Oh, well, that just happened to be negative 2. And then the last one, what is y when x is 2? And that just happens to be positive one. So those are three of the main ways that you're going to be asked to work with function notation. But basically, you need to be comfortable plugging in x values um, and getting the corresponding output. You need to be comfortable plugging in for the f of x and finding the corresponding x value. And then also, I want you to be comfortable looking at a graph and saying, OK, what is f of 0? Um, what is f of 1? And we could have gone backwards. We could have said, hey, when does f of x equal negative 3? And it would have been 0. But hopefully this video helped you to see what the function notation is and kind of some of the most important questions that you'll see um, in class, on homework, quizzes, tests. This is what you need to know um, to be comfortable with that type of material. So hopefully this helped, and we'll see you in the next one.